Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're going to have a look at aging down props, whether it's for film, cosplay, reenactment, just because you want it on your wall. I make loads of stuff for film and TV, like Game of Thrones, Taboo, most notably Witcher series one and sort of two now. So I made loads of stuff on that, Geralt swords, all sorts of other things. When you make a prop or you supply a prop, it, it needs to match the character that it's going to. Now, if that character has just bought a knife like this one, straight from a shop, well, it's shiny, it's new, brilliant. Looks good. If he hasn't, if he's been living out in the woods for 20 years, this is not the knife that he would have, and it's just wrong. So you have to take this knife and you need to age it down. And I'm gonna show you how to age the leatherwork, the metalwork, the guards, blades, handles, bronzework, brasswork, just using simple techniques and simple things that you can do to really make it look like it's lived the life. And I'm gonna show you that on this range of weapons here, which are all Todd Cutler pieces. And I'm gonna do different things to different ones so you can just get a feel for you know, really hard life, a little bit more gentle, met a dragon, whatever it might be, all right? When you're aging props, there's two real primary things to do. One is consider the quality of the piece in the first place, because if you make something junk and then age it, it will look like aged junk. That's not what you want. You have to make it well and you have to make it properly, and then you have to hurt it and destroy it, which can hurt you. But the other one that you need to consider is the story of the piece, the life it has lived. Because is it owned by a nobleman and a guy cleans it every single day, so you've got 20 years of cleaning wear on it, but not destruction? Has it been owned by a drunk guy who just hangs around alehouses all the time and he kind of been bothered to put a new shape on the end of his scabbard when it snapped off? Right? And everything in between. So you need to imagine in yourself the life that it has leave, lived. So as an example, you know, if you are a, a guy who works on the battlements, a watchman, and that's always on your belt there. Every night you lean up against the same bit of parapet. Well, you know what? Maybe you're gonna end up really scuffing your dagger in that particular point. That's just part of the story, okay? Then the other thing is, you think, oh, okay, lovely. That looks great. I'm gonna rough the whole outside of it. It's gonna look brilliant, it's brilliant. Don't forget the back. Because sooner or later, somebody will end up seeing the back of the piece. And you can't have the back of a piece which is virginal. It's got to look as used and abused as everything else. The whole thing has got to match because otherwise you will get caught out. I have a selection here of household chemicals or stuff that you can fairly easily get. Uh, I also have safety specs, be safe, and gloves. So specs on and we're gonna go for it. A first point to make about layering. And what I mean by that is putting layers of age into it. This is a mass weapon, it's brass, they could be bronze or iron, they are going to get dented and dinged. So age it, then destroy it a little bit. Age it, destroy it a bit more. First thing we'll do is just age this one. This is just very straightforward if you have the materials. So this is a brass antiquing fluid that I bought off eBay. You paint it on and you can see that the whole thing very rapidly goes black or dark brown. Now as with any of this, it's important to degrease beforehand. You have to degrease everything. I should have said that at the start, sorry. And you can see, in fact, there, there's probably a little bit of grease. Can you see how the patch is holding? And now I'm just gonna leave this to sit and, and get darker. And I'm gonna come back to that one later on. There's a few more pieces which have got brass on. So I'm just gonna age those up and we can polish this right back. And you can just show where there, there'll be a bit of black, a bit of brass. And then there's a tiny bit more brass on this pin washer at the end. I've hit the polish on all of these knives now, just taking it back with some wire wool and some fine sandpaper, just gives something more for the chemicals to bite into. So the most dramatic and fastest one is probably the ferric chloride. So I'm gonna show you that first. So you can see I paint it on and immediately it changes the color. Now that is actually also etching. So I'm just wetting it out it, it sort of falls off a bit, it beads up a bit, but as soon as it starts to bite, it starts to stay where you put it much better. Obviously follow your safety instructions on this, wearing goggles, wearing your gloves and whatever else they ask you to do. And never mix chemicals unless you know what the result is gonna be. Should be able to see now that the whole thing is darkening up. But that ferric chloride doesn't really stay where you want it to, not in, not in great volume. So what I've found is I paint it on and I just leave it to bite for a couple of minutes. And then actually I sprinkle it with sawdust. You don't need a lot, but this sort of holds the ferric chloride in place. 
So nothing special, bit of flour, bit of anything like that really. Uh, then I blob a bit more ferric chloride on it and now I leave it. And every two or three hours I'll go back, I'll give it a bit more sawdust, a bit more ferric chloride and that really is it. I'll do another one. So these first two I've done straight up with ferric chloride. I'm going to do this third one in ferric chloride and citric acid. That, that also works quite well. So again, usual story, just wetting it down with ferric chloride. Now this time, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of citric acid on it. So I've just sort of unevenly just sprinkled the citric acid on there and that will just bleed in. I'm just going to leave that and it will give a slightly different finish to the last. We're going to move away from the nasty chemicals. We're going to go on to salt water now, which can be incredibly aggressive. I've just added some water into this table salt. So we now have definitely a saturated solution. So again, this is not going to be as instant color change as the ferric chloride is. So it's not going to wet out in the same way. So I'm just putting some water on and now I'm going to sprinkle my sawdust on again. And that just helps to hold the moisture in place. So I'm making now just a paste. And this is going to build over the next hour or two, just as I keep adding to it. I'm going to come back to this every couple of hours, adding a bit more salt water to it. I'm going to do the same again on this sax. Because let's face it, if a sax didn't meet salt water, what did it meet? Next, we're going to etch up this dudgeon dagger with citric acid. That's a traditional European etching compound, but it takes a long time. So that is citric acid powder, so lemon juice, orange, lime and water. So we've got a concentrated solution. This is just the same as salt water. It will take quite a while. It's not going to give you the instant reaction, but it is going to colour the metal fairly quickly, but it takes quite a long time to etch. Any acid, so vinegar as an example, is a good way to find out if you've got chrome plated or stainless fittings. Paint a bit of acid on it, vinegar, citric acid, lemon juice, lime. If it discolours after a couple of minutes, then you know that you have got a carbon steel. So again, citric acid, bit of powder, just helps hold it in place. And then the last knife we're going to do is going to be vinegar. So this is acetic acid very vinegary smell. You can get that as a powdered form or you can get, you know, just normal regular vinegar. It takes a while to, to etch it down and discolour it, but also what I'm going to do with this one is just sprinkle it with salt because that works very well, just regular table salt. Now I'm going to leave these blades and come back to them every now and again, just adding a little bit of whatever the right fluid was or the right powder. And, you know, 24 hours, you'll get some good results. I've got a collection of bits and pieces here, all manner of stuff really, that I can use to try and age stuff down. So on the left here, we've just got a concrete block, old brick, edge of a paving slab, whatever. Good for texture, hammering onto, scraping. Got some files, some knives for cutting in, blowtorch. That's good for distressing leather. Good for handles as well, to a limited extent. Then I've got three different waxes, a beeswax, a paraffin wax. And then on the right hand side, we've got uh, a mixture of beeswax and oil actually, so it sort of gives you a bit of a slimy, like dirty guy's been handling it kind of feel. Some mud, some instant coffee, good for mixing with water and aging down. Hammers, brushes, sandpapers, wire, a couple of different colour boot polishes. You know, whatever, really, whatever works for you. If it doesn't work, try something else. First of all, we'll take this sheath here, which is in uh, a brown with a nice shiny shape. I'm going to hit that first of all with some of our brass aging fluid. We're going to age the leather now. Tip one, and this is important, anything structural do not mess with. So the thongs that will suspend that and hold it on your belt or a belt itself, anything like that, do not degrade it because you will regret it. So we're going to hit this first of all. Well, let us say that this belongs to a soldier and it's sort of had a 10 year life. We're just going to give it a little bit of a rub over with wire wool, front and back. So I've knocked back some of the colour now. 
so it's not as brown as it once was. Well, you know what? This guy likes eating his chicken. He's a greasy dude, because that's where he puts his hand, you see, when he pulls the scabbard out. So I'm gonna put some of this fat here, which is beeswax and grease. This is gonna stop color going in really at that point. So I'm just rubbing it in a little now. That's fine. But then you know what? He got in a fight. And there's a couple of bad cuts there. Opened right up. There's another one here. And another little divot here. If you are taking this on a film set, these bits might fall off. Causes continuity problems. So just get rid of anything that's flappy. If you're a reenactor, cosplay doesn't matter. Let's get a bit of colour in here. I don't like using leather colours for doing this because it's just too big a change. So I'm just smearing a bit of boot polish in there, getting it in the cuts, because they're going to show different now. So a little bit of variety in there. Now let's pick up a different tool. It doesn't much matter. This is a rasp. So let's just say it sits here and he leans up against the castle wall. It's always wearing that bit of his scabbard. God, it's so annoying. He paid loads of money for this. So now it's worn away. There's a bit of texture in there. Bit of wire wall. A couple of fluffy bits. We'll get rid of those. Then he was eating his roast chicken again one night. And some of the fat ended up going on it. So that's just a bit of beeswax. Just melted into the surface and then just rubbed back. So you can see you're beginning to get some life into it. Just gonna add some instant coffee. This gives a sort of a slightly matter duller thing finish fills a little bit of corners. It's good if the leather is not sealed already. This has got quite a lot of wax on it. So some bits will take, some it won't. Just going to dry this off. So this chap, you know, he's gotten a couple of fights. He's a messy eater. And you know what? I think we're going to leave this guy there. So I've got a sack scabbard here. I'm just going to knot the colour back a bit. Again, with a bit of wire wool, I've given it a little bit of a wet down. I'm just going to put a, a pattern in. Now, this is easily done. I'm going to do this quick and I'm going to do this crudely. But really, I'm just putting in some parallel lines there. It's going to end up being a little bit Viking-y. So they liked sort of diagonals. I've dampened the leather down and with veg tan leather you get this fantastic little effect. So there we are. Nicely viking. Now if we take our torch, a little bit of heat and it opens right up. So you can see. Now that's great but Olaf here, whoever owned this, maybe he actually left it sitting by a fire one day as well. So I'm just going to hit this with a bit more heat and that will crisp up the top layer just in that area there because he left it on some embers I think. Now if I just bend that it will start to crack. So at this point Olaf decided that he wanted to polish it up. So I'm just going to put a bit of polish on it. And I'm also going to darken down, because Olaf was unlucky here. This all happened really soon after he bought it. So I'm just going to hit this now, the brass work. But then at the same time, he got into a couple of fights. Don't know what that is. Spears, I guess. This concrete is great. scratching up. Now I'm just going to polish over this with a bit of a bit of polish, I think brown polish. I 
I'm going to work my way through all the scabbards now, just thinking about the little bits of damage and the little bits of distress that I'm doing and what might have happened to them. This guy here, he's lived a long time in the wilderness, so I'm going to scrub off quite a lot of the dye that's in here. I'm breaking the surface of this. He's put it in wrong a couple of times. Uh, you know, he's a bit drunk on whatever. There you go. So he's gone right through. I'm going to lift those up by wetting them a bit. Just going to crack it a bit. So if you wet the surface and then flex it, you'll get this incredible cracking. It does brittle the leather, so you've got to be a bit careful not to do it too heavy, too hard. Don't know what happened on the back. I think elk, very sharp elk horn. There we go. Now I'm going to put a bit of polish in here. Now that will go quite well if I heat that in. Also, I've got my beeswax and oil mix because, you know, he's always handling this and getting grease on there and grease up here. Now, I think that this thing has really had a bit of a life. Always rubs on a sharp bit of harness on his saddle, that. This thong broke ages back. So he tried to mend it, didn't work. And he's just put in another thong under it. And I think part of this stitching may have failed, so I'm just going to stitch in a little bit of that with some white so it's contrast, you can see it. I'm just going to grubby the thong up on here. So a little bit of water and mud. And this is finest quality soil from the garden. Now the thing about anything like that, if it's a permanent fix, like a dye or an oil, then what will happen is it will stay where you want it to be. If it's something like this, it can change. If you're a reenactor, not a problem. If you want con continuity on a film set, can be a problem. So whenever you use anything natural, like coffee or mud, you have to seal it afterwards to make sure it doesn't wash away in the rain or whatever. When that dries, I'll just brush that off. This scabbard here, I've changed the shape because you might not want your knife to look like everybody else's. So this is another Todd Cutler shape. I've hit it with the antiquing fluid and now you can see I'm just going to brush it back with a little bit of wire wool. High points it will leave bright, low points it will leave a bit darker. I'm going to say that this was owned by somebody who's well to do so he looks after his gear so I'm going to knock the whole thing back a little bit just making it a bit a bit tireder but really quite quite a gentle job on this one. Maybe just a little a little cut there just for a, a bit of life. And I'm going to brush over this now with some black and then age it again because that's what would have happened to it in, in life. He's worn it, he's cleaned it and then maybe he didn't have any black polish, he only had a bit of brown. It's about thinking your way through what may have happened. So it's lived nicely but it's not brand new. We're going to do some artwork on this one now. Now, I think it's fair to say, a lot of you are probably going to say, well, I can't do artwork. It's not for me. Well, you know what? It wasn't for them either. Have a look at these pictures. This is a great book from the Museum of London. Some of the pieces are phenomenally skilled. Some of them, less so. Look at that. Anyone could do that, including you. I mean, he must have been drunk and comatose to be able to do it that badly. Some of the work in this book is appalling. <laughs> and I can do it, you can do it. The thing is, they love stuff to be decorated. So decorate anything. Now I'm going to take this one, I'm going to put some water on the front, I'm just going to cut a very quick pattern in, and I'm going to show you how simple it is. So a bit of water to dampen it, not soaking wet. And now I'm going to do one of the patterns that's very common in that book, and I'm going to do it fast. So this is basically the sort of thing a guy in the alehouse might do when he's bored and he's just got to fill some time. Now you can go along on these lines with a toothpick and just open them out by putting the toothpick in there and just doing it. Or if the leather's a little bit damp, just a little bit of heat. And now you've ended up with a pattern not dissimilar to the book. I'm going to put some border lines on it, open them up as well. 
And you know what? I just made a mistake on that, my line slipped. Who cares? So this guy bought that and he bought it new and then he did that. Now he wants to get a bit of colour in there. So he's going to rub a bit of brown in. He might have used a walnut dye. Probably not a boot polish like us. And I'm just going to go through the others now doing various ageing techniques. Nice little scratch up on the block. We come back to these knives the next day. These two were done with straight ferric chloride and then mixed in with the sawdust. This was ferric chloride and citric acid. Those two are safe enough together. That one was salt water, but I think possibly when I kept on dosing them yesterday as I was going through, just redoing, I might have got some ferric chloride in with that, but it, it should be mainly salt water. That is just salt water, that's citric acid, and that is vinegar. So let's scrub them off and have a look what we've got. So I'm just scrubbing them with water now. You can get them wet. You don't have to worry because you're aging the things, you know, so you've rusted them all, you're gonna rust them. These are our knives, all cleaned down and we're just going to zoom in now and just have a look at the slight differences between the finish. First up we have the antenna dagger done with the ferric chloride and the same with the trade knife. Mix in the sawdust it just sort of keeps it all there and the longer you leave it in contact of course the more it's going to etch. The rondel here was done with ferric chloride and then I think the discs were not quite so matted. Ferric chloride didn't bite so hard but you can see the pitting that the sprinkling of citric acid has given. So that's quite an interesting slightly different finish. Then the bollock dagger and the sacks were done with salt water. And again, just ladle on the salt, sprinkle the salt on and the sawdust day after day, get three, four, five days, and you'll get a hell of a rusty, disgusting finish. Clean it back and you've got some lovely pitting underneath. Then we've just got citric acid on the dudgeon dagger. Again, just slightly different finish. And then the last was the vinegar actually, which was really quite successful on this uh, quill and dagger. So it's about 24 hours of vinegar and sawdust and you get this nice sort of fairly gentle matte finish. What I have just done before this was to wash them down with water and a little scrubbing brush and then to brush in bicarbonate of soda or baking powder which is an alkali and that neutralizes any acids and stops the rust hopefully but inevitably you won't really get there so the next thing or you won't get the whole thing is get a bit of oil on there and any kind of oil really and this sort of seals the surface and hopefully will stop any further degradation because you know otherwise in a month's time you might have something that looks completely different to where you are now and now we've got a, a mottled blade but the problem with this of course is this looks false so if a guy has looked after his knife the edge is going to be more polished it's going to be more honed this is going to be all sort of knocked back a little bit not so prominent so I take a scotch bright pad which you can buy even a um, a kitchen scouring pad and you just even everything up by giving it a nice scrub and because you're doing it through the oil then it's going to help to really rub that in now what you're also going to do now is concentrate on getting this texture that you're putting on it this finish on it more onto the edges or more onto the tip for instance so they come up brighter and the rest is a little darker naturally you're going to be left a bit darker here because you can't get in there just like in real life you can't get in there so I'm just going to work these through now in the same way. I've finished these blades as much as I'm going to now. So I've just cleaned them up a bit. So let's get in close and just have a look at some of the degradation and pitting that's on them and the discoloration. And of course, the longer you leave it in these chemicals, the more degradation you're going to get. So really it's just a case of just trying it and have a look day after day clean it down put it on it's all cheap stuff so if you want more just put it back in the salt or the acid or whatever it is we're now going to have a look at aging the woodwork down if there's any lacquer or oil on it that needs to be cleaned away because obviously it's going to stop any coloring any work that we do on it getting absorbed in and then for this I've also brought the mace back in I mutilated the head a little bit 
and we're going to have a look at the woodwork on this. Here is a simple toolkit for attacking the woodwork. So we've got sandpaper, beeswax, uh, choppers, hammers, files, knives. So it doesn't all happen by just putting a bit of mud on it and going, well, it's finished now. It's not finished. You've got to layer it and that will give it depth. It will give it life. So we're going to start with this one here. A little bit of mud maybe to begin. And I'm just going to work my way through. Then just a little bit of water, make sure it's really nicely in there. And we're going to put this to one side now. We've got a trade knife now. This is a bit wild westy. He's bound to have been in some knife fights. So I've just hacked it. Well, obviously that's a bit sharp, so he, he would have cleaned that off. Maybe just a couple of who knows what they are. And again, we're just going to leave that to dry now. The main one to look at just sort of further down the line here is going to be this one, which has got leather. So I'm going to just degrade that leather, first of all, just by abusing the surface with a bit of sandpaper and a bit of wire wool. At the moment, it's sort of all furry and hairy, pretty horrible looking. But once we've smoothed it down, it will just start to be a bit uneven, really. And now some wire wool. So it's just softening the surface a little bit. You see? And I'm going to work my way down, putting a little bit of colour, a little bit of abuse into all of these, and then we're going to start again. Heat is very good for getting instant colour into things, but it's also a cheat that really shows if you're not careful with it, because it just immediately looks like somebody has made it easy by burning the surface and it just kind of looks a bit rubbishy. The other thing to be careful with heat is where you get a direction change in the handle here. If I go in there, it won't burn into the corner and you'll get a bright line straight between that joint line and it, it just looks rubbish. And then when we clean that back with a bit of wire wool, you can see now it's not horribly obvious. Now I've put some black onto this handle here but as soon as you put artificial colours and dyes in, there's a real danger of it just screaming that it's artificial because it's just a monotone, it's one colour. So I'm just adding a bit of brown in here as well. Up here, right in between the, the grooves of this little cap, I'm going to get some more colour in there. So I'm just going to put some, some of this coffee in so that will dry to being a different colour. Now one of the things about bollock daggers is this wood the, of the guard here is a little bit vulnerable to being struck and being removed. So I'm going to actually do that deliberately now. Just going to very carefully just take off a little chunk of one of these bollocks. Sorry guys. There we go. So just taking that down, just going to rub a bit of dirt in because that's a fairly recent injury he has sustained. And then again, I've got a nice soft brass cap just with the heel of this cleaver here. I'm just going to just go into it. There we are. Just a little bit of life. And that's done. This sax here is an interesting piece because it's got horn at the front here. Now horn is usually delivered quite highly polished, but you can discolour it quite well with a bit of heat. The other thing about a sax is it's worn at the front here, blade edge up. So I'm just going to start by layering a bit of black on here and then a bit of brown under it. Now I'm going to now hit the horn with some heat and that will discolour it just a bit. And then also that heat is going to melt the polish into the handle. Now that is going to buff quite nicely to a good finish. So I've got a, a groove here that's very white in the bottom and I'm never going to be able to get colour down in there and as I literally just wadge it in. So I've just put in some mud into that and I'll now squidge it in there, just sort of gently dragging it up a little bit, but because it's not quite so wet it's not going to bond so well. So I'm going to get a sort of a bleed of colour with this mud. A squidge and then we're onto our leather handled one. So first thing. 
just a little cut and now we're going to leave all of this to dry and then we'll bring back for another pass and you can see where we've got to. This is the first stage of layering on the handles. So I'm just going to go back in and abuse them again and put more colour in and just keep building it up like that. So what happens now is I've just put some dents in and this polish is not going to go to the bottom of the dents. So there's going to be like a texture, a colour change between new, new work and old work. Probably rubs when he's sitting down against his belly because he's probably a fat guy. As we saw earlier, heat shrinks leather and it's pulled the handle away. So I'm just going to do exactly what they would have done. You know, there's nothing wrong with the knife. Maybe they haven't got time to fix the handle, but everybody's got a bit of string. So I'm just going to put a little bit of hemp cord in this case onto the handle and I'm just going to bind it up. I'm not doing, deliberately, a particularly good job. But I'll do a job that will work, but it's not going to look great. Now I'm just going to cheat this and put a little spot of super glue, crazy glue, on here. And that will just hold everything in place. It'll soak in, it means that the string is not going to come off now. And it's just going to grub up nicely. And last of them is this mace. Well, I think when you're whacking people, you're bound to put quite a lot of damage up under the head. So I'm just going to... I'm going to put some grub into this, bit of coffee, let's say. Yeah, let's put some coffee. And then I'm going to dry it, and we're going to do the process again. I'm going to smear a bit of boot polish in here. I know that's wet and it's not going to go on very well, but that's the idea. I don't want it to go on very well. Now I'm guessing the handle is going to be a bit dirtier than everywhere else because that's a bit that he's held it. Now that's interesting. Immediately I was a bit heavy with the black there. Black is not really a colour you get. Not jet black, not boot polish black. It's not a colour you get in nature and often it screams that it's not quite right and I think I have just messed that up. But anyway, we'll be able to get that back because we have heat. So that's just going to soak the black in a bit. So when I struck this with the cleaver, I removed the chunk, which is what I wanted, but it's just left a little bit splinters. So I'm just getting rid of those because splinters are not what you want. And then again, you may have been saying all along, why wasn't there any edge damage on these? Why didn't I whack one on another? The problem is then you get little dings in the side of the blade and they catch on the scabbard, they catch on your hands. It's just more trouble than it's worth. And so I don't do that, I leave the blades clean. So I'm going to do one more of these dings and I'm going to age it differently so it looks like it was done at a different time. A little bit of black as well. And then I'm just going to burn it in there. And then again, I'm just going to use my wax and oil compound. And it just, it dries over time and it just forms a nice natural finish. One that looks like it's in keeping with the piece. We got to the end of the aging process and all of these weapons here. And as you can see, it's not enormously difficult. You can do it using things you have around the house, whether it's chemicals or whether it's objects. You can do it. Give it a go, really. We've all got time on our hands. Learn a new skill. And this is brilliant for giving your character depth and, and stopping everything looking brand new. And it's a case of layers, like I said again and again. Little bit of texture, little bit of colour, bit of texture, bit of colour. Keep just laying it on and it gives depth and personality to the piece. Thank you very much. And if you're interested in any of these pieces, they're all available from toddcutler.com.